All right, hello people watching 5-7 Notes. Um, this is going to be very similar to like when we've done modeling functions before, like in your calculator where you like enter a bunch of data like this table into your calculator and you say, make me a cubic function. That's basically what we're doing today, okay? Um, the functions that we've done so far are all, have all been polynomials, polynomial functions. So like if we want a linear function, we would go linreg. If we want a quadratic function, we would go quad reg. Okay, a uh, linear function is x to the first power, quadratic function is x squared. We've done cubic, we've done quartic. I think quartic is the highest it goes. So we do cubic reg and we've done quart reg. Okay, and then it like, we put the data in there and it will spit out a, a function, right? Yeah, no, like this is just this is just like telling the calculator make me an equation that has this stuff in it, okay? Except now we're going to be doing it with exponential functions, um, logistic functions, and logarithmic functions, okay? So that's what we've got over here. So uh, ever before we've done polynomial, those four I think I think are the ones that we've been doing, and we have a power. Um, which is just a simple exponential function. So I'm going to skip down here to exponential. Power is like an exponential function with like no p on the front of it, I guess. Power is just x to whatever. No, 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 no. Wrong, wrong. I'm telling you wrong. Power is what they call polynomial. I lied. Polynomial. So that's the ones that we just wrote down. Power functions are polynomial functions. Never mind. I'm thinking of something else, okay? And exponential functions. So these are the ones that are new to us. Exponential, logarithmic, and logistic, okay? Exponential functions are going to, if you graph them, look something like this. Whoop, just like that, okay? A log function, when you graph him, is going to look like this. He's like the opposite of a, so he has a vertical asymptote. Whereas an exponential function has a horizontal asymptote. That's what a logarithmic function looks like, okay? Yesterday I talked to you for just a, like a hot second about a logistic function and how he has like ease in the denominator. So like here's what a logistic function will look like. He has ease in the bottom versus an exponential function doesn't have a denominator. And logistic, I don't know if you remember from what I was talking about yesterday, it starts out as an exponential function. So it's going up, but then it tapers off and it has like that upper limit cap and it's like, incorporating the fact in there that like you can't just have a population of fish increase forever and ever and ever in a pond because like you're gonna run out of space they're gonna run out of food so eventually they're they're gonna reach max capacity which is that horizontal line and that's like how much the pond can hold okay that max capacity is represented by this top number so there was one where we had like 20,000 and that was like our max capacity for the number of fish that could be held in that pond, okay? Um, that's, that's what your horizontal asymptote will be at every single time, okay? And that's a logistic function. So exponential, do we have any room? Exponential, when you tell the calculator to do exponential, it's gonna be E-X-P-R-E-G, okay? E-X-P-R-E-G, okay? I'm gonna pull up Claire's calculator because I gotta make sure I tell you correctly. Stat calc, okay, so E-X-P-R-E-G, okay. Um, yeah, okay. A logarithmic, are you ready for this one? A lot of people think it's L-O-G, it's not. It is L-N-R-E-G, because L-N is a log, right? So they just use natural log for logarithmic. So it is not L-O-G reg. It is ln reg, okay? Then logistic, which is different than logarithmic, but they're kind of the same. This one on your calculator says logistic, L-O-G-I-S-T-I-C, and I don't even think it has reg after it. On, no, Claire's, it on Claire's calculator, it just says logistic, okay? So you'll do logistic for those. So when it asks for a log equation, you're gonna use ln reg, okay? When it asks for an exponential, you're gonna use exp reg. Logistic, you're going to use the one that says logistic, okay? So that's how that works, all right? All right, exponential models. This is the one thing that they want us to check over before we actually start entering data in. There is a way of looking at your data and figuring out if it represents an exponential function or not, okay? Like in a linear function, if you had a table, you don't have to write this down. If you had a table for a linear function, and let's say these are going by two. So we have two, four, six, eight, right? The x's are all going, going up by twos. So plus two, plus two, plus two. I would know that this is a linear function if 
The y's are also going up by the same amount. So like maybe they're going up by three. So we have three, six, nine, 12. As long as the x's and y's are going up by the same amount, that is a linear function, correct? Like my slope in that case. Anybody know what my slope would be? The other way around. Y over x, three over two, right? My slope would be the change in y over the change of x, so, so, uh, so that would be three over two. But that is what a table would look like for a linear function, okay? For an exponential function, first and foremost, we wanna make sure that the x's are still going up by the same amount. Are they? They're going up by how much? Four. Four. We're adding four each time. Okay, that has to be the same. Plus four, plus four, plus four, plus four. But here's what we do to check to see if it is exponential, meaning it's increasing exponentially, meaning it's doing something like this, right? It's doing that thing, it's increasing exponentially. What we do is we take like the second one, and instead of finding the difference, subtracting them, I divide. So 48 divided by 3, they said was 16. 768 divided by 48, they said was 16. The third or the fourth number divided by the third number was also 16. This number divided by this number is 16. So we're dividing rather than subtracting them, right? Like we did over here, we're subtracting those numbers. Here, it's an exponential if you can divide each consecutive one out and it gets to be the same number, okay? Now, in realistic data, you will hardly ever get it to where they're exactly 100% the same. But they're going to say it's okay if one of them is 16 and one of them is 15.99 and one of them is 16.1. They're going to say that's close enough to being exponential. You just have like one data value that maybe is just off by a little bit. Okay. So it still will be an exponential function when you're checking these if those numbers are really close to each other. Okay. If one of them is 16 and the other one is 12, that's probably off by too much. Does that make sense? Okay. Off by like but one whole one. Mm. I would I would look at like all of them together and like if one of them is off by one as long as the other ones are okay then then I would say okay yeah yeah does that make sense so use your best judgment to figure out are those ratios these are called ratios are those ratios the same going across the board when you're comparing okay that's how we can check just by like just checking the data to see if it's exponential or not okay all right, let's go down to this one, and they say, blah, 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 in the years before the Civil War, the population of the United States grew rapidly as shown. Find a model for this function. Um, they probably want us to do an exponential model, I'm guessing. I think this one's an exponential model. Find a model. Okay, let's do exponential. E-X-P-R-E-G, but we have to put this into our calculator. Oh, I'm not recording in the right <coughs> setting for them to be able to see this. Okay. So, whatever. Anyway, all right, let's uh, do some stuff here. I don't want to type in 1790, and I don't want to type in 1800, and I don't want to type in 1810. What would you like to type in? One, zero. Zero? You want to start with zero? Uh, you, start, you could start with 10, too. Ten. What? Sure. Or we could do, like, one. But, but, but the problem, okay, so, so I like your idea. If we, if we make this one and we make this two, don't write that down. If we make this one and we make this two, if we if it spits out the equation and let's say they want us to then plug in the year like 1791, we would have to plug in like 1.1 or whatever, right? So we should make them probably 10 year spacings, right? It just doesn't it doesn't matter what we start at. You wanna start at zero? We can start at 90 so that they end in the same amount. I don't care. I'm going to start at 90. Okay, so if we make this one 90, then that means what is year zero? 1700 would be year zero, right? Okay, so that one would be 90. 1800 would be 100. This would be 110. This would be 120. This would be 130. I don't care what numbers you use. You could have gone 0, 10, 20, whatever. 140. 150, 160, okay? And then typing these in as your Y coordinates, okay? All right, so these are your X's, these are your Y's. Do you remember where to go on your calculator? Stat edit. Stat, hit the stat button, and you go over to, or it's already on edit, so stat edit, okay? And you're gonna type all those in. So start typing your X's in. Um, this is like X, what do they call it, X1, Y1? 
Yeah, x1, y1, whatever. Here are your x's, here are your y's, and then uh, you'll get all those in there. Make sure that you are careful when you type them in. Because if you're off by just one number, you won't get the same thing as what we got. Like if you flip two numbers around or whatever. Okay, I'll give you a second to do that. And then we'll do the EXPREG. Oh. Um, yes, but I'll show you what to do. Kind of. Did you get them all typed in? Ish? Ish, kind of. Okay. All right. So, um, I'm, I'm going to address Luke's question. He says on the homework, there's one problem where it says sketch a scatter plot. Okay. Great. I'm going to have the calculator do that for me, and I'm just going to like copy down ish what the calculator does. Okay. So let's say we want to put this on a scatter plot on my calculator. Okay. What I'm going to do is first, before I hit graph, if you want to graph, to graph, put this up here. Here are the buttons that you need to push. First thing we need to do is make sure our scatter plot is on. So you go to its second y equals, which is the stat plot button. It needs to be on. The first one needs to be on. Turn on. Okay. Second y equals, which is the stat plot button, and turn your plots on. Okay. Okay. Good. Then what we're going to do is we're going to change the window. Okay. Because otherwise it's going to leave it like negative 10 to 10 window. Okay. So let's talk about what we want to change our windows to. For your x's, let's figure out the numbers that x needs to be between and the numbers y needs to be between. So what's my smallest x value that I typed into my list? 90. And the biggest one was? 160. 160. So let's go 80 to 170. We'll just go a little bit outside of each one, right? What's the smallest y value? 3.93 to 31.44. Sure. 3 to 32. That's fine. Okay, so go through and make sure your stat plot's on. Change your window to those values or ish, that, that something, something of that nature. When you get it to that, somebody let me see your window. Or somebody let me see your graph. Ah. Okay, so when it says make a, stat, make a scatter plot, I'm looking at Haley's right now, and Haley's got a dot here, and 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 a something, and a we just keep going up, right? What does that look like? Exponential. Exponential. So? Crazy. Crazy. So we're doing the right thing. After we've sketched the scatter plot, determined it, it's exponential, we're going to say, calculator, make me an exponential equation. So go to stat. Go to stat and go over to calc and go down to EXPREG. Are we confused where we are? No. We're doing okay? EXPREG, and you're gonna have a mess well, of stuff, kinda. Of yeah, yeah, round to like two decimal places, okay? I did all the decimal places. So, so it has, it, it, the first thing that it spits out is like it says Y equals, does it say A times B to the X power or something? Yes. A, B to the X or something like that, and then it says below A equals this and B equals this. So you're just going to plug those in for A. So A was point, we'll go 279. A was, is that right? 278. 278. Mm -hmm. Okay, point two, A was 0.278. And then B, I don't know how you want to write this. I'll do it in parentheses. B was, is it 0 0.02 or 0 0.03, something like that? 1.03. 1.03 something. That's it. To the x power. Is that it? 1.03 to the x power. So this is your exponential function that models that data. 
Okay, then what we could do is if they say, I want to know what it is in this year, just plug that number in for X. Adjusted, right? Like, like if they said 1701, we would just plug one in or, you know, whatever. Like, we would have to adjust that number. The, the scatter plot oh, scatter plot. So you go to, you just go to graph. After you've turned your plots on and you've changed your window, you just hit graph. And it will graph the, the dots. Yeah. Are we finishing the lesson today? Yeah. We might not do all of them anyway because you guys get the idea. Okay, good. Are we happy with that problem? Okay, all right, the next one is logistic, same process, okay? The last one is logarithmic, same process, okay? Now, um, they give you graphs of what each one of these look like, so if you are ever wondering, like a, hold on, a, an exponential model is gonna increase kind of like this exponentially, okay? A quartic model kind of looks somewhat like an exponential model. I don't know why they're giving you that, but a quartic model, um, they're saying for a quartic model. Quartic kind of looks like a W, right? Like usually like a W is what quartic does, okay? Sometimes they will use a quartic model to represent an exponential model, but in the quartic model, they'll only use like this chunk of it, right? Like the second curve of the W or the first curve of the W because this looks like exponential, right? if it's curving up to a W. So that's why they threw quartic models in there. They're saying you could use a quartic model instead of an exponential model, you're just using that right side of the W, okay? A logistic model is similar to an exponential model where he just tapers off like that, okay? So it'll spit that out for you, okay? Um, let's, show, do you wanna go through and type an example two? No? I do wanna go through and type an example three because I'm gonna show you something weird that's gonna happen, ready? In a log model, type in on the main screen, go log zero, real quick. On the main screen, type in log zero equals. If you type in and you say, I wanna find log of zero, it's the same thing as finding log of a negative, right? You end up with an error, okay, error. So what that means is that for a log function, and I think for a logistic also, you want to make sure that this number right here, whatever you start your table at, is not zero. Otherwise, it will not let you graph and it will not find an equation for you because you can't take a log of a zero. So instead of starting 1950 at zero, let's start him at something else, right? Like 10, or we could start him at 50 and say that this is 50, this is 70, this is 80, should we do that? Yeah. Okay, sure. This is 90. I always like to end him in the, you know, like, then it just makes math easy for me. Okay, so there's that. But I'm going to put a little star here that says for log and, and I'm going to say logistic too. Log and logistic. Don't start at zero. Okay, don't start at zero because you cannot, it will, it will not give you a function. You'll go to all that work of typing the whole thing in and then it will say, nope. I don't want to do it for you, okay? So try that. Try typing in 50, 70, 80, 90. We're going to do a logarithmic, which again is not L-O-G. This is L-N-R-E-G, right? L-N-R-E-G and it opens up whatever, okay? And it gives you all that stuff. So type those in for your X1, Y1. If you want to see a scatter plot, you can do that too. You'll have to change your window, but uh, do that. Type in L-N-R-E-G and we'll see what we get. Hands are sticky from that spray, and now it's all over this pen. Huh. I'm gonna have to like go through with a. I wonder if Clorox would take it off, like those Lysol wipes. Hmm. I should try that. It almost errored me, and I got scared. It almost errored you? Yeah, it's like popped up error, and then gave me answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, So for those types of functions, you have to start at a number other than zero. Okay, whether it's 10, whether it's, you know, whatever. Is this L-N-R-E-G? L-N-R-E-G, yep, okay. for logarithmic. And they'll tell you which one to do, I think, on there. They'll tell you which one is, which one is good, okay? 
Did you guys get a value or an equation? Yeah. Real big numbers? Yeah. Because Well, look at your y-coordinates, though. Your y-coordinates are in the hundred and hundred thousands. So it spits out like y equals a plus b ln x, right? Okay. Um, so then you just have to type in numbers for a and b. Okay. So, yeah, really big numbers. Negative 2, 3, 8, 2. Is that correct? 3, 6, 8. We'll go 0.3 mm -hmm. plus... Six four zero six 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 point eight ln x. Okay, there is that like two million something for that first number. Crazy. Okay, now they should tell you which one they want, right? If they don't tell you which one they want, you get to choose r squared. You get to choose, but you look at the r squared value of each one. So I would go through. And I would say exponential regression. What's your R squared for that? What's your R squared for that? What's your R squared for that? You want your R squared to be close to 1. The closest that it is to 1, the better it is. So if it's like 0 0.99 for one of them, right? Or 0 0.98 or 0 0.95, you're going to choose the one that's closest to 1, okay? out of the three. So exponential, logarithmic, logistic, which one is closest to a value of one for your R squared? Okay, got it? Questions? Uh, what would be the limit for limitation of these models? Limitations of these models, you can't plug in zero for a log function. Like on nine, we would proportion it together in limitation. Okay, let's so look at it. Is Erica in there? Yes, she is. Could she come to the office, please? Yes. Okay, the number of children who are homeschooled in the United States is selected, blah, 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 in the school years. What are the limitations of each model? Limitations. You have to do a quadratic and a logistic model. Is what are the limitations of each model? I just do one that there's an A through E of a number. Ugh. Oh. Yeah. Um, Can we skip nine? Or let's do it together. When it says limitations, I don't know. Um, I would say for a logistic model, like you could not evaluate your zero, so you've got to set up your equations so that, or your your data so that your zero is not your first data point. What are limitations? X is greater than zero. Y has to be less than or equal to. Oh, 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 okay. So sketch a scatter plot. Oh, I get it. 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 Sketch a scatter plot. They say x equals zero corresponds to 1980. Mm -hmm. Okay, if it spits out a logistic model for me, mm -hmm. and they say find the value in 1975, that would technically be x equals negative five. I cannot plug in a negative number into that model. Right. right? So I could not evaluate. If they assign for me that x equals zero has to start at 1980. That means I can't plug in any years before or including 1980 into that model. Greater than 1980. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so your limitations would be, I couldn't evaluate any like any years before 1980 using the logistic model. Now, quadratic I could, but would the quadratic be as accurate as a logistic? Maybe not. What is quadratic? Quadratic wouldn't have any limitations. What? Quadratic wouldn't. Quadratic wouldn't have any limitations other than the fact that it probably wouldn't be as accurate as the logistic model. Because quadratic is going to continue going up and up and up forever, versus logistic is going to take into consideration that we're going to taper off. So that would be the only bad thing about, like, quadratic would look like, quadratic would look like this, would look like that, versus logistic would go like this, which is more realistic. Logistic is going to be more realistic, but you couldn't evaluate before year 1980 if you, you know. So those... Does that help? Like those limitations, kind of. It took like two minutes for the calculator to calculate that. <laughs> Did it really? Sometimes it like takes a while to think. I don't know. Anyway, so there's that. Okay, good. Questions? Um, number four on the homework. Number four on the homework. Ooh. Would that be x? Or no, that would be power. It could be, or it could be exponential decay. I'll take either one. I have. I've done all of the other ones, yeah. and I have power and exponential left over. Sure. Well, where would exponential be then? There's only seven. There's six options, so there's seven. Oh, boy. Mm. Mm. I'll take multiple on some of them. Yeah. 
Yeah. Sure. Like number six is obviously not like that one's obvious which one it is. What'd you put for six? D. Pubic. 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 Yeah, because it's got the little Humpty Doos. What about number one? What about number one? I would say logistic. It's kind of doing one of these little things, right, and tapering off. Yep. So in general, what do they look like? Yeah, some of them I'll take like more than one answer, like number three or number four. Those ones are going to be tricky. Three and four are not as obvious. Okay, I got logarithmic number three. I, I believe that. Does that work in two? What? Well, look at how she graphs them on the For number three? Side. Yeah, I would say number three is logarithmic because it's kind of doing one of these. Yeah, I would say log for number three would work. Okay, yeah, I will. I will accept. Like, it's it's hard when they only give you like this much of the graph, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, it could be in. It could be a bunch of them, right? So anyway, like some answers are obviously wrong. Like that's not linear, right? But some of them it could be more than once. So, all right, goodbye, people in the video.